inertia of the brick. Here is another classic, which I like to do because it is so dramatic. A sheet of paper, about 20 inches by 30, 20 inches by 30, 600 square inches. The load on each square inch is roughly 15 pounds, atmospheric pressure at sea level. Therefore, about 9,000 pounds of air on that paper. That's enormous inertia. Proof. Here is a board, quarter inch thick. I put the board under here. And now I am going to try to put that enormous mass of air into motion by a sudden impulsive blow on this end of the stick. The impulsive view that people have is, oh, the whole thing will catapult. No, it will not, because that mass of air is at rest, and Newton said it wishes to remain so. Watch it. It did not move. It did not move. Fantastic. Now, remember, ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls, when I refer to this block being at rest, and then I say, what does it want to do? And the answer is, it wants to remain at rest. I would not have you dispose of this as trivia, because it took the genius of an Isaac Newton to establish it. Nothing trivial about it. Consider another dramatic demonstration. Oh, this one is a beaut. Here is a vessel of water, and it has quite some inertia, and I put it on these, this paper, and I move it slowly, slowly. Remember, this has large inertia. It wants to remain at rest. And I am not trying to accelerate it too rapidly. And thereby, friction forces hold it onto the paper. And so I pull more and more and more and more. Uh oh, we're in a little trouble because friction isn't right for me. But anyone in his right mind must testify to the prospect if I continue in the manner I have been doing, the whole thing will fall down. But if I invoke the laws of Newton, the first law, which says it wants to remain at rest and will refuse to be moved by short-lived impulsive forces, watch it. Are you not surprised that it stayed there? Consider another, more application. Here is a vehicle, and here is a body standing upright in the vehicle. And now I want to show you that if I move the vehicle, the body is at rest with respect to it, and what does it want to do? It wants to stay there. Watch it. And so it did. And that's why when you accelerate a car rapidly from a standstill, your head is jerked back because of the large inertia of the head. On the other hand, if the car is moving uniformly, if I now suddenly arrest its motion, what will the block do? Well, the block was going straight, and that's what it wants to do. Oh, notice I accelerated too fast the first way. There it is, and the block tipped forward. A quick one for your inquiry. Here I have two vessels, and remember the subject is inertia. They each contain one pint. And let us say that one is filled with cream and the other with milk. So I have a pint of milk and a pint of cream. Quickly, quickly, which has the greater inertia? That's equivalent to asking which has the greater mass. That's equivalent to asking which has the greater weight. And some are led to say, oh, the cream, the cream, of course, because it's thick and sluggish and viscous. Oh, no, 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 mistake. The milk has the greater inertia for reasons, of course, you see clearly yourself. The pint of milk weighs more than the pint of cream. Another demonstration of inertia again. Here is a stack of coins. They happen to be Australian pennies. Why? Because they have larger inertia than U.S. pennies. And now what can I do? With a thin blade, I can deliver a sharp impulsive blow to the lowermost one. And what do I hope to see? I hope to see the whole stack remain unmoved. Why? Because it's at rest and wants to stay. There it is. There it is. There it is. And I just love that demonstration. Why? Because it is a classic revealing the beauty and strength and simplicity, in a sense, of Newton's first law. I want to show one more. <clears throat> Remember what the second part of the law said. 
I would urge you never to forget that the first law has two parts, which are rarely ever properly separated. I said a body moving in a straight line wishes to continue so. Here is a ball swinging in a vertical plane, in a vertical circle. I would remind you, I would remind you that at the instant in question when the ball is right there on the end of the string, its motion is tangent to the path at that place, and if I should cut the string or let go of it, the ball would not go radially outward, but would go instantaneously in a direction tangent. So, this introduces here, in a passing way, the idea of centrifugal force, which is a nasty thing to handle, and often much is said that is wrong. But if I let go of the string at the top, where will the ball go? Tangent. Watch it. There it is, tangent. Now, it is proper, before we conclude a program on Isaac Newton, to show you one of many photographs of Newton. A very important place this man occupies in the history of humankind. And I would hope that when you go to London sometime, you will most certainly go to Westminster Abbey and see where he is buried. And what does it say on that beautiful epitaph? Among other things, let men rejoice that so great a one has existed. So we are coming shortly to the end of the program. One final enchanting thing, an array of cups. If I put this heavy block on them gently, I can drive this spike into that block without the cups feeling anything. Why? Why? Because the, black bo the block has enormous inertia. If, on the other hand, I drop it, it's going and it wants to keep going. There it is. And thus I conclude, ladies and gentlemen, a program on inertia. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you.